Many thrill seekers find zip lines exhilarating, but without the proper braking system, they can quickly become terrifying. Magnetic brakes are hands free and engage automatically, so there's no need to panic. Just hang on, enjoy the ride, and let the brake take care of the landing. In early human history, zip lines were used to transfer supplies across dangerous terrain. Today, zip lines are popular with tourists and adrenaline junkies all over the world. As the rider approaches the landing, the brake engages using magnets that induce eddy currents instead of friction. This creates enough drag to stop the ride. To make a zip line break, they start with a drum. It's made of zinc coated steel to prevent rust. A worker sands off the zinc so they can add the magnets. He hammers locating pins into the metal. He applies adhesive to the sanded areas, then places magnets onto the adhesive. He uses steel pins as a guide. As the adhesive cures, the magnets bond to the metal. Next, he applies a bonding agent to a shaft bearing and inserts it into the hole in the center. Using a hydraulic press, he drives the bearing further into the hole. These rotor arms will spin in the magnetic field to create the braking force. A worker fits gears into two plates and bolts the plates to each side of the rotor assembly. He tests the rotor arms and slides the rotor gears onto the shaft already installed in the brake drum. He opens the rotors and spins them. He adds a ring of magnets to surround the rotors in a magnetic field. Satisfied with the fit, he removes the rotor assembly from the drum temporarily and clips springs to the rotor. These reaction springs will cushion the braking action. Now, a worker reinstalls the rotor device in the brake drum. He places the magnetic ring back on top. The strong magnetic attraction secures it to the assembly. The next part is a large ring with more gears inside it. He hammers and then screws it in place. He spins the assembly again to confirm it's functional. He installs the final two gears on the end of the shaft. This completes the core of the zip line brake. Another employee stitches a nylon hand grip to tough synthetic webbing. When this webbing is pulled out of the brake, it will set the rotor arms in motion to create the eddy currents that are the braking force. After protecting the brake core with a metal plate, a worker puts the unit in a plastic case. He installs a plate on the shaft for the webbing to sit on, then loops the webbing around it. He also places a drum on top for the retraction spring. He applies silicone adhesive around the drum. This secures the aluminum base plate. He now inserts the retraction spring. He caps the spring with a metal plate and reinforces the clips with metallic tape. Using a crank, he winds more of the webbing into the brake. He tightens the metal shackle that holds the two sections of webbing together and winds the rest of it into the device. He inserts a guide roller for the webbing and adds a two-part retaining clip. He secures the clip with a rounded metal pin. This next part is a plastic insert for the top of the case. He screws a nut onto the shaft to lock down the insert. He places the top half of the case onto the brake assembly and secures it to the lower half. He snaps a dust cover onto the case. They're now ready to test this zip line brake system. A motor pulls out the webbing to simulate different body weights and different zip lining speeds, while a computer analyzes the brake's performance. With magnetic zipline brakes, riders can come down at a wide range of speeds, but still slow down at the same rate, ensuring that everyone has a fun but safe ride.